सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु First of all, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances to all the senior Vaishnavas assembled here and uh, also to my parents who are seated in the back. So, somebody was asking me earlier, Prabhu, on uh, Kali Durga's appearance day, they sacrifice a goat. In, on Eid, they sacrifice goat. What do you all do in Ram Nomi? I said, the goat is going to sit and give a class today. <laughs> I'm going to be the one who's going to be offered today. I usually don't speak. Somebody was asking, Prabhu, how come you don't give a class? I said, I don't get assigned. So I said, Prabhu, you are the one who assigns everybody for Sunday class. <laughs> so, I said, yeah, that is why I don't get a sign. <laughs> but then how come today you got a sign? He said, because I didn't assign. <laughs> it was somebody else who assigned to this class. The person is totally confused. He's sitting out still and <laughs> scratching his head. But anyways, uh, glad to get an opportunity to speak about Ram, Ram, Ram Chandra. And as Shamkun Prabhu said, by default, you know, Ram Chandra Prabhu is speaking. <laughs> I don't know why, but yes. So, we have about 25 minutes, and in 25 minutes, there's lots to cover. So I'm gonna try to go really fast, and you stay focused with me as much as you can. So being the appearance day of the Lord, first we must understand why did the Lord appear? We celebrate Janmashmi, we celebrate Ram Naomi, we celebrate appearance days, but we sometimes, devotees, everybody core knows why the Lord appears. It's pretty simple. When the Bhagavad Gita, the verse is there, let's chant together. Yada Yada Hidharmasya Radir Bhavati Varata Abhyutanam Dharmasya Tadatmanam Sridhamyaham Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, O oh, descendant of Bharata, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. So here are the reasons mentioned why the Lord appears. It doesn't matter where it, whether it's so-called India, or it's so-called the Western world, or it's the Middle Eastern world, or whichever world. But when the Lord appears in whichever form, these are mainly the three reasons. When there's a decline, in religious practices and a predominant rise of religion, two, two reasons. When does he appear? We did. Why does he appear? Let's chant together. Paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya chadushkritam dharma samstapana karya sambhavami yuge yuge. So when we know why, also there's no reasons why he's coming. He doesn't have to come here when there's decline in religion. He can do everything from push a button from where he is in the spiritual world. But mainly to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish the principles of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. But of the three reasons, our Acharyas say, the, the most important reason why he appears is to deliver the pious, to glorify his devotees. Even his devotees can you know, kill in, uh, uh, in uh, a demani person. He has the power to do that. But the Lord appears just to glorify his devotees. And how does he appear? Let's chant together. Rama Dhimurti Shukalam Yuvena Kishta Nana Vatar Makurodha Bhavayeshu Kintu Krishna Swayam Sambhava Param Puhanyo I worship 
Govinda, these are the words of Lord Brahma. The primeval Lord who manifested himself personally as Krishna and the different avatars in the world in the form of Ram, Narasimha, Vamana, etc. as the subjective portions. So different forms. If somebody tells you this is the only God, then they have not understood God. Because we cannot limit God to a country, a religion. God is infinite. He can do anything. He can appear as anybody, anytime, as he wishes, as he desires. And how he appears is already mentioned in the scriptures. Ram, Adi. Ram and Anya, many, many, many other forms. Like there are waves in the ocean, there are forms and appearances of the Lord. But some of the main appearances of the Lord are mentioned here. The six categories of avatars, there are six different types. Purusha avatar, Leela avatar, Guna avatar, Manvantara avatar, Yuga avatar, Shatyavesha avatar. Where does he reside? So the Lord appears, but where was he before? Before he came here. Let's chant together. Goloka Nami Jadami Tamecha Tasya Devi Mahesha Harinam Shute Shute Shu Tete Prabhava Sukhara Gita Sakyena Govinda Mali Purusham Tamaham Bhajami Lowest of all is located Devi Dham, mundane world. Next above it is Mahesh Dham, abode of Mahesha. Above Mahesh Dham is placed Hari Dham, above abode of Hari. And above them all is located Krishna's own round name, Gauloka. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, who has allotted their respective authorities to the rulers of these graded realms. So it is explained in the Bhagavatam that the topmost place in the spiritual world is Goloka Dham, where Lord Krishna resides with his close associates. And right below that is Ayodhya Dham where Lord Ramchandra and his pastimes happen. So Ayodhya Dham is the entrance to Guru Kuryama. And most important, how do we recognize the Supreme Lord? There's a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam where Kurkardama Muni says this verse, let's chant together. Tvam Surigis Tattva Bhimutsayadha Sadha Bhimadhan Padapitam my dear Lord, your lotus feet are the reservoir that always deserves to receive worshipful homage from all great sages, eager to understand the absolute truth. You are full in opulence, renunciation, transcendental fame, knowledge, strength, and beauty. And therefore I surrender myself unto your lotus feet. So these are the six qualities that Supreme Lord possesses in fullness, complete. So if somebody comes to you and says, this is the Lord, or somebody brings and tells you, this Guru of mine, he has appeared, he is the Supreme Lord, you have to ask these questions. Does he have these six qualities in fullness? As you know, somebody is beautiful, but they're not rich. Somebody is rich, but they're not beautiful. Somebody is knowledgeable, but they don't have any strength. So we have to find these six qualities in someone. If that we can find in a person, that is the Supreme Lord. And for us to find somebody who doesn't have these six opulences, to identify these six things in somebody else is impossible. If I don't know how to make money, how can I know somebody else who knows how to make money? I have to be knowledgeable in that area, that field, to be able to recognize somebody who's genuine in that field. Which means that the best process is to approach a spiritual master or guru. Through the spiritual master, this knowledge comes in a descending order. From the Lord to Lord Brahma, coming down through Narada Muni, etc., etc., going all the way down. Not the way the modern science tries to find, which is you do an experiment, you establish a truth, you accept it, you make a note, then you go to the next level, you make a note, and keep going upwards. No. So we have to have a spiritual mastery in our lives to progress in spiritual life. And here we have Srila Prabhupada, the spiritual master of this Hare Krishna movement from Azizkan. We're very grateful to Srila Prabhupada that today not only we have Lord Ramachandra here in this temple, 
but we have Shishikorni Tai. For those who do not know, Shishikorni Tai is none other than Srimati Radharani and Krishna and Sita Ram. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's also a pastime where he showed the forms of Sita and Ram to Murari Gupta, who was none other than Anuman, devotee of Lord Ram. And he was asked to accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he tried his best, but he could not because he was a Ram Bhakta. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to him in his dreams and said, do not worry, I am the same Ram. So here we have Shishigorni Thai Sita Ram present with us, so fortunate. Another quality of the Supreme Lord is also all merciful. If the Lord is not merciful, how can he be God? Many times we say, how come so many bad things happen to me or somebody else? Isn't the Lord merciful? Yes, he is. But we have to plug into his plans. He will not act according to our plans. Nobody acts according to our plans, and even in this material world. So we'll talk about a few pastimes and there's so much last four days you've been hearing about Ram, Ram Katha. So I was in dilemma what to speak, what not to speak. So I chose the pastime of uh, when Hanuman goes to Lanka and he devours Lanka and he comes back. And Lord Ram, Hanuman returns after a successful visit to Lanka and narrates the details from his mission. Lord Ramchandra is waiting to hear the news from Anuman. His wife has been taken away. He's so, so sad. He's crying. He's waiting to hear the whereabouts of his wife. I remember once this guy was with him and he was walking and a truck passed by. And he started to make some noise as if he is in fear. <laughs> I said, what happened to you? He said, this truck, this truck, this truck went by. I said, yeah, so why are you afraid of a truck? He says, no, um, just last month, a truck came and took my wife away. And I'm, I'm afraid now he's coming back and bringing her back. <laughs> <laughs> but here was Lord Ramachandra, he was, he was crying. He was crying because his wife was lost. And he was wondering, when will she come back? What is her whereabouts? But as soon as Hanuman came back, Hanuman went through so many challenges. He was asked to just go and find out about Sita Devi. When he reached there, he saw Lanka when he got there. He was, you know, when he, when he was to fly across Lanka, it was explained that he was 80, 80 miles wide and 240 miles long. His shadow from the sky was that much on the ocean. When he reached Lanka, he saw that there was forest. In front of there, there was lake. In front of there, there was a pond big with ferocious crocodiles in it. Then there were tall walls with so many nails and things like that. Then there were hundreds, thousands and thousands of soldiers and so many. This was a perfect place for people who are into, is it called decathlon or what is it called? Who are going to swimming when they climb and when they run? Triathlon. Huh? Triathlon, yeah. Ah, something. There was a perfect place. They should have Olympics over there in Sri Lanka. Because you have to swim, you have to jump, you do so many things. But he went there, he, he, he fought with the Rakshasas. There were different types of Rakshasas in there for the kids. Close your ears. There were Rakshasas, you know, who had nose here on the forehead. With one ear, one. I, there's so many different types of weird looking Rakshasas with no head. And they were tormenting Sita. So he went through a lot. He went through the palaces where he saw so many maid servants of Ravana laying down without clothes. And here was Hamunaman, a Brahmachari. Well, we just turn on the TV and then we get captivated for a while. He was Hanuman in Lanka looking at all these things. He came back and when he described all these things to Ram, Ram was very touched. He was lamenting, but at that point he forgot his lamentation and he thanked Hanuman. Now Sita could have died over there, he would not have known, and Ram would have also died just out of you know the separation from Sita. Ram saw that how Hanuman, leaving the association of devotees, was there in Lanka with all the Rakshasas. You see, sometimes during Prabhupada's time, even now, our own Sadashi Prabhu. 
all by himself. He goes out for Sankirtan for distribution. You know, you have to face so many materialistic people, sometimes criticism. You go for Sankirtan, devotees face so many challenges. But when they came back, Srila Prabhupada was so touched. Same way, Ram was so touched. That you're doing all this for me? And guess what? Hanuman didn't ask anything in return. How many of us do service in the temple and not expect anything? Nobody. We all expect something in return. At least a thank you. But here was Hanuman, selfless service for Ram. His only pleasure was to please Lord Ram. So he went over and beyond. He was asked to go find Sita. Not only did he find Sita, but he went. And he also showed his strength to Ram. He was actually being captured and they were just dragging him. They lit the fire and they were just dragging him like nobody. And Hanuman said, what do they think? This, is, this doesn't befit a devotee. I'm a servant of Lord Ram. They can't just be dragging me like this. I have to show them who I am. And he grew bigger and bigger and taller and they burned Lanka. You know, devotees are three types. One, when a guru gives instruction to a devotee, they do this. First class devotee does more than what the spiritual master has asked him to do or her to do. A mediocre devotee, if a spiritual master says, do this, a mediocre devotee will just do that much and stop. And the next, the last class of devotees are when a spiritual master gives an instruction, do this, they will not do anything. And in all three categories, the spiritual master sees some capability in that person. And that's why the spiritual master says, go, build a temple, go, do book distribution, go, do this program. But because each one has different faith in the spiritual master, spiritual master is the same. But if it's a devotee, it is us who do not take to heart the instruction of the spiritual master. Here was Hanuman. He wanted to show, and many times we see our own devotees. They are out there preaching like Kshatriyas, without any fear. We have our own Bushara Prabhu here. For years since Srila Prabhupada's time, he's been preaching. I see him every time in Rath Yatra and New York Rath Yatras. During Kirtan, we are all doing Kirtan, and he's talking to the newcomers. He's talking at the festival side. He's approaching for so many years because Devotees like Prabhuji have taken Srila Prabhupada's instructions to heart. So, from this story, I was thinking, what can I take back? Stories, pastimes, wonderful. But how can I apply it personally in my life? And I said, we have to go over and beyond our own service. Why should we wait for somebody to tell? We all have been coming to this temple, to this con, for so many years. We all know the routines. But still, sometimes you have to ask people, Haribo, can you do this, please? Why? Each and every one of us have to take it upon themselves. Become leaders of this temple. Become leaders of this moment. This temple is just a drop in the ocean. This is gone. If you go out of Tawako and you see it's an ocean, what Srila Prabhupada has done. Why wait for somebody to tell me this is what you can do, Prabhu? And after I'm done, Prabhu, can you take this and put it here? So I take it and put it here and then I go back. No, we want to do more than that. We want to serve Srila Prabhupada to our best ability. This is the time. Do not focus on your own problems. I learned from Lord Ramachandras. He had his own problems. But as soon as a devotee was serving him, he forgot his problems. And what did he say? Anuman, I'm on exile. I really don't have, if I, if you were in Ayodhya, I would have given so much, so much wealth, but I'm here. I'm here in exile and I'm in forest and I really have nothing with me. My dear Sita is also not with me. I can't give you anything, Anuman. But one thing, all I can do is embrace you. And you see that beautiful embrace of Lord Ram to Hanuman. And actually, if you look closer, I was looking at it with a magnifying glass, I went closer, I zoomed in, zoomed in, and I saw in the left eye of Lord Ram, there was a tear there. And that tear must have fallen on the shoulder of Hanuman. 
and I was thinking, when the nectar from the churning of the ocean between the demons and the gods happened, and from that part, what happened? Water fell to four places. Huh? What was in that water pot? Amrit. Uh, somebody takes that, they will live forever. And those four drops fell on this planet. And that four places is where the Kumbh Mela takes place. People go and take bath on specific days. So I was thinking Kumbh Mela, from that water, imagine what it must be like when a tear falls from the Lord on your shoulder. That is a devotee. That is our Hanuman. And that is what we must learn. We want an embrace from the Lord. We don't want any other things. All other things will be taken care of. I'll tell you from my own example. When I started coming to this temple many, many years ago, I was offered a business of 7-Eleven. And I just started reading Shri Prabhupada's books. And on, in 1993, on Ram Naomi Day, one of the devotees, Subhan Prabhu, was preaching to me. He was asking, have you given up meat? I was eating meat that time. And I said, Prabhu, almost. It's almost like once a month or twice a month. And it was Ram Naomi. And he told me that, Prabhu, he asked me one question. He said, do you know if you're going to wake up tomorrow morning? I said, no, no guarantee. He says, then you know something. If you give up meat eating today, then Lord Ram will accept all your past deeds, sinful deeds. He will not take you as a meat eater. And he walked away. And I kept meditating upon this line. And I said, you know what? Today is the appearance day of Lord Ram. And I have not brought anything to give as a gift to him. What could be better than I give up eating meat from today? And I made an offering. I said, Lord Ram, from today, as an offering to you, I'm going to give up eating meat. And since then, this was 1993, until today, there's no question about meat. But I was saying that around the same time after that, a business offer came for a 7-Eleven store, and I went there to check, and they had a deli. And there was a business partner who said, would you like to get into it? And I told my dad, no. We don't want to get into it because they're selling meat. So they're selling it, but we don't have to. He said, no, I'm not going to get into it. Lost an opportunity to earn a lot of money. Fine. Let go. But this is what I read in Shiddha Prabhupada's books. This is what it should be done. I'm not doing it. Back then and now, all that, what was gone, I thought, was taken care of by the Lord. We just have to surrender sincerely to the Supreme Lord. And the Lord takes everything else will come automatically. So anyways, we don't have time, but I will quickly cover. So at this point, well, Hanuman, he is here with Lord Ram. He destroys Lanka, comes back over there. Ravan calls a meeting of his management team. And he's asking them that, what should I do? He's taking advice. He saw that this was just a monkey, but he's done a lot of damage. We need to do, figure out something. And all the Rakshasas assembled, and they started giving him advice. Don't worry. This Lanka you have captured from Kubera himself. Your wife, Mandodari, you defeated Maya Dhanav and his daughter, Mandodari, you married. Such great acts you have performed. Why do you have to worry about these Raman? Prahasta, his commander-in-chief, started saying, you conquered Devatas, Gandharvas, Dhanavas, Pishachas. What are these monkeys and humans? Durmukha, he speaks up. I will get rid of all the monkeys in this world. Vajradamsara, who cares about monkeys, he says, I'll personally go and kill Ram and Lakshmi. Nikumba, who's the son of Kumbhakarna, he speaks up. He says, you all remain here. I shall go and kill. So imagine in this courthouse, all these arguments is going, everybody's shouting, Vajrahanu, Ravana, you enjoy your drinks here. I will go myself and kill him. You enjoy with your maids and uh, everyone, but I'll go. Look at these names. I just wanted to capture these names, you know. Can you imagine Durmukha, Vajradamstra? You know, I was like, next day you hear that kids are making noise and somebody, who's making noise outside? 
So Vibhishan then speaks up, Vibhishan gives good advice, and uh, there are three points he men mentions. Uh, well, one should not get wild and attack until these three tactics have been used. A, a way to reconcile, to give some gifts, or to have some arguments and win over the other party. If that doesn't happen, then we can attack. But that has not happened yet, Ravan. We should not do this. So, like this, the next day, again, Ravana, you know, Vibhishan speaks. Ravan says, dismiss court. Next day again, Vibhisha comes. Ravan comes in the courthouse with folded hands. Vibhishan begs. Here is somebody who cares for Ravan. He knew that what he had done was wrong, but he keeps speaking. He sees that there's bad omens in the in, in the in the palace. From the yakya, from the sacrifices, there's only smoke coming out. There's sparks coming out. There are snakes all over in the kitchen. In the sacrificial offerings, there is ants all over. He said, these are bad omens, Ravana. Why don't you understand? Please give up Sita. Kumbhakarna comes. After six months, he's woken up. And Kumbhakarna wakes up. He was also very intelligent. He chastises Ravana. He chastises Ravana and says, where were you? Where were you before? Did you come to ask us when you went to kidnap Sita? After you've performed the act, now you're coming and asking us, well, what should we do? Uh, it happens in our lives too. We do something stupid, foolish, and then we come back and we ask for, Prabhu, can we, what can be done here? Or my Lord, what can be done? Where was your Siksha Guru, Diksha Guru? Where were they when we had to take these steps, when we took these steps? So like this, there was a lot of back and forth, back and forth, and finally, Vibhishan was insulted, Indrajit insulted, Ravana insulted, and Vibhishan leaves the camp of Lord Ram. He could not stand there anymore. And when he arrives to Lord's camp, Vibhishan, as soon as he lands there with four of his associates, he comes there. And at that point, Sugriv sees Vibhishan, the demons, and he alerts everybody. And he says, here, the demon has come. There must be some cause. They want to attack us, fight with us. Everybody on guard. Shri Shri Sita Ram Lakshmi Hanuman Ki, Shri Gauri Thai Ki, Shri Naji Ki, Shri Prabhupada Ki. So Ram at that point, again, there was Ravan taking advice in Lanka. And here is Ram taking advice with the monkey kings, all the monkeys there. And Sukhdev also tells Ram, all in good faith, that be careful. He's deceived. He's left the camp of his brother. He's come here. We just don't know what his intentions are. Many other monkeys say the same thing, Jamavan, Sukhdev. And then finally, Lord Ram asks, Hanuman, what do you think, Hanuman? And Hanuman sweetly speaks that I don't think Vibhishan has come here with any other motive. He's very humble. We heard him speak. With folded hands, he's come. And we can see that he doesn't have any other intentions. Sometimes we go in front of the Lord. Something else in our heart, something else outside. We sometimes go in front of the spiritual master. Something else inside and something else outside. But the devotees and the Lord can understand what's through and through. Not to say that Sugriv and others were not devotees. So Hanuman says and Lord Ram says, yes, I accept what Hanuman is saying. And then Lord Ram goes to Vibhishan and he calls him and he says, I cannot refuse anyone who has come to take shelter of me. Not concerned with their past birth. If one declares from the bottom of their heart, Lord, I am yours, I vow to protect them forever. I declare even Ravana comes today, I will accept him. So here we can see that all we need is simplicity by which we can surrender. Simple service. Yesterday and today we were cooking, yesterday I was cooking, we were doing many services. And we were in the kitchen and I was seeing uh, Gopal Prabhu was serving and his little 
Yogesh, little monkey, Yogesh was also serving both one small, one father and son, serving together with so much sincerity he was serving and I was feeling it. But this is the sincerity with which each and every one of us must serve. As soon as he was done taking one side of the dust and the dust pan and threw, he came running again. Prabhuji, what next? I said, Prabhu, why don't you come and give Bhakti Riksha class in my program, Yogesh Prabhu? Where did you learn this? Why don't you come and give the Sunday class? Because this is what is required. The Brahmana who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met at the South India tour didn't know. He there wasn't knowledgeable, no philosophy, much uh, scholar. But he knew what Bhagavad Gita, seeing Krishna as a charity, was crying. So we need a simple heart, sincerity, no kapat, no duplicity in our heart. I was seeing the daughter of uh, Darshan and Nisha Mataji, Subhadra her name? Yeah. One day I was sitting over there and she was right in front of Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. And she was going like this. And she was looking at everybody and smiling. She was going like this and being smiling. Then 15, 20 times she did that. And I said, Krishna, this is what is required to please the spiritual master. Why didn't we get this? A simple, humble surrender to the spiritual master and following their instructions. So, this is what I take from this that we have to go in the mood. We have to speak up, number one. You know, do not worry about when there is something wrong, we must speak up like Vibhishan did. He instructed. We need, ourselves need instructions like that. If we are doing something wrong in our own spiritual life, we need somebody to come and tell us, otherwise it will never happen. But most of the times it happens as soon as somebody tells us, all Pranadati, Sunichena, everything disappears. Isn't it? So we must accept, we must consider ourselves fortunate if we have somebody who can guide us in this path of Krishna consciousness. And if we don't have somebody who can guide us on the path of Krishna consciousness, we can begin today. Find somebody, it could be a Siksha Guru or a Diksha Guru. Find somebody who can guide you, not in your, only your spiritual life, but also in your material life. And when that person instructs you, Take that instruction coming from Krishna. Don't wait because I didn't get the answer that I wanted. So I'll go to the next person. I didn't get the answer from that next Shiksha Guru either. So I'll go to the next person. Now I got all my questions answered. So he is my Shiksha Guru for today. No. So that's why I say, do not accept. Some people say, Prabhu, you are my Shiksha Guru. I said, Prabhuji, please don't. Because if you do, I'm going to give you an instruction. And if you cannot do, then don't address me as a Shiksha Guru. It is important who we accept as a Shiksha Guru. It is important before we know whose feet we touch. People just go for people's feet and touch them. And then the next moment somebody says, can you please help me in the kitchen? Very difficult problem. So that's why surrender is very important. Don't hastily surrender. But when you surrender, Surrender like Hanuman. No matter who comes and insults you, no matter who deviates from you, no matter your family member, your friends, your colleagues, whoever stops you from coming to the temple, whoever tells you this is all bogus, this Krishna, there is no Krishna, or this Krishna is not the only God, and your Prabhupada is not the only Prabhupada, and this Iskon is not the only Iskon. Remember Hanuman. Be focused and say, forget what they want to say. I am the servant of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki! Yeah. Hare Krishna, thank you for being very patient and listening. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.